Hey Brittany, thanks for the comment. So it's always things like getting vet bills and have insurance, but you wanna pay the money up front and before they assess the claim. I completely get where you're coming from and these are common situations that hit people for a six when it comes to their cash flow management and their budgeting. Trust me, I know because I have over 100 animals. I run an animal sanctuary. But I'm gonna give you some practical tips whether or not you've got lots of animals or whether there's other things that are in your cash flow that often hit you for a six. If how you can calibrate your cash flow system to make sure that these become less surprises and they can be priced in. So for things like uh, unexpected bills, we need to look to create uh, accountability and, uh, and amounts of money that are set aside for the unexpected because life, there is always going to be an element of luck there are some individuals that are luckier than others, and we want to try and ensure that for whatever reason, we have buffers in place that ensure that if we are unlucky for whatever reason, that it is not going to completely hit us off track for our goals. So in this particular scenario, let's say for argument's sake that over the course of a year, you have had $2,000 in vet bills, and let's say that you didn't have insurance. Now, if you hadn't factored that into your budget previously, what we now need to do is go back to what our lifestyle costs, we need to make sure that we factor in that allowance. So as a general rule of thumb, I'd be factoring in a kind of $150 a month, $180 a month that we set aside into a war chest that is there for the purposes of protecting against the unforeseen. The idea here being that worst case scenario, something like that does happen again. Maybe it's more expensive because obviously we're never going to know, but because we've set that money aside, we have a buffer that we can fall back on. Or on the flip side, if we go an entire year where we don't spend that amount of money, or maybe we don't spend any of it, then that allows us to advance our position. So what this comes down to is the implementation of a cash flow feedback loop. We create a perspective of what we think is going to happen to the best of our ability. We should try our best to think of, well, what is the worst that could happen? What are other things that I think I need to plan for? And we set out in pursuit of trying to prove that perspective. We then have the reality of what actually happens along the way. And whenever that reality happens, if it deviates from our perspective or what we thought was going to happen, we need to ask ourselves, why did this happen? Why didn't I foresee it? And what can I do to try and buffer it in to ensure that I never end up in this situation being surprised again? And then we adjust our perspective and we factor that into the plan. And by doing this time and time again, right? Car breaks down. Something happens where you've got to get your roof fixed. You've got to do an emergency trip to see a family member. Something else comes up that you need to pay for. All of these things, we go through this cash flow feedback loop. We constantly recalibrate the plan and you'll start to see that your perspective of what you thought was going to happen and your reality starts becoming more and more equal. And they, they look very, very similar. And it's from this position that you can now define how much income you need to earn to ensure that you can cover all of those expenses, both actual and things that you're preparing for, and ensure that you still have surplus in order to achieve your goals. The big issue here is that for most of us either, we don't understand what our lifestyle really costs, we don't have a structure in place to ensure that we're accountable to those costs, so we experience cash flow creep, that our expenses just creep up without us knowing. Three, we're surprised by the unexpected, or four, we are not earning enough income that allow us to provide for the other three. And when we understand this, we can now quantify the gap and we can proactively work towards it. Whenever I have this conversation, there's always individuals who say, oh yeah, easy, just go out and earn more money. Well, it's not easy. However, nothing worth anything in life is easy. However, there is a difference between flying completely blind and knowing that you're failing, but not exactly knowing exactly by how much, or quantifying that gap and then mustering up the perseverance and the strength to then go and work out a way to bridge it. Um, because there are plenty of ways for you to do that. What it often comes down to is your personal accountability to whether you want that result enough and whether you're prepared to do what it takes to get there. And it's far easier to muster up that energy and that perseverance when you know the specific gaps that you need to bridge. Hope this is helpful. Any questions, let me know.